So it looks like we are good now. We are live on Facebook. We are live here on Zoom. It looks like most of our attendees are here. So for those of you who didn't hear, I apologize for the delay in getting started tonight. Uh, with our live events, occasionally comes a little bit of technical difficulties. So we're a couple minutes delayed tonight, but hey, get excited. Today is Earth Day. We're celebrating, we're continuing to celebrate Earth Day all month long. Tonight, we're thrilled to have Mark and Jessica Neal with us to talk about the Neal family wines. We also have Chad from our wine team here tonight. And we have David from Perfecta. David helps make it possible for Neal wines to be available in New Hampshire. So thank you to, uh, to Chad and to David and Mark and Jessica for all being here tonight. I won't make the people wait any longer to hear about your fabulous wines. So Mark, Jessica, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we always have technical difficulties in California. That's why we're on the very, very, very left side of the coast here. So um, uh, thank you for getting the hookup here and uh, we appreciate uh, your patience uh, and uh, good evening. Um, I'm Mark Neal, my daughter, Jessica, and Jessica works at Neal Family Vineyards. And uh, she got uh, up there about a couple of years ago after graduating from college down in Southern California in the marketing as well as working for other industries such as uh, buying and selling wine down there. So it's great to have her back home amongst my other five kids that, uh, or all five kids are actually up here in Napa Valley right now. And I have my two boys are working for me in the vineyard management company. So give you a, a brief history a little bit about um, how I got in the wine business, um, born and raised in Napa Valley um, in the vineyards. And I sometimes I would call myself a farmer. Um, why I say that back in the early 60s uh, and into the 70s, Napa Valley was consisting of prune trees and walnut trees. And the, one of the biggest commodities in Napa Valley was cattle at the time in 1968, that was the highest paid uh, commodity in the county. Um, and the transition of uh, from prune trees and walnut trees and cherry trees and uh, cattle uh, was really before the French tasting in 76. It really started in 1970. And my dad was working for a lot of different uh, vineyardists and farmers. Um, Prior to opening up his own company in 1968, I got lucky and did the smart move by joining in with my father back then. I bought my first tractor and we started a vineyard management company. And it was really a lot of fun. I mean, honestly, uh, my dad was a uh, great mentor, my best friend, and really learned a lot from him. And sometimes I taught him a few things and, and I heard about it later. <laughs> sort of those, those things can go a different way. We'll, we'll talk about those kind of things later. But um, uh, today, our video management company is about 500 employees. Um, we're the largest certified organic growers in Northern California. We're also the largest biodynamic farming company in the nation. We have a little over 600 acres in Napa County alone in biodynamic. And we're running about 1,800 acres of certified organic vineyards in Napa County. Napa County only has about now about 7% that are certified organic and the rest of the vineyards in Napa Valley are either farmed systemically, uh, systemic, sustainable, excuse yeah. me, sorry about that, and also are commercial farming. Um, so with us, we don't use any man-made chemicals. Uh, we use everything from Mother Earth. We use predator insects. We use non um, uh, petroleum based materials, synthetic, non synthetic made materials. We use everything from our own property. And that's what's one of the biggest thing about being biodynamic. We build our own compost piles. We have our own goats. We have our own sheep. We have our cattle. We have our chickens. And we build our compost from our property, from the plumbus, from our winery to our garden waste. Um, and that's one of the things that's uh, really the true word of sustainable is, is that we actually do everything within our own property line. Um, and we cultivate our vineyards to that direction. So um, to give you a little idea, the farming company, um, not only is 500 employees, but we harvest grapes uh, for about 82 clients. Um, I only own about 60 acres of vineyard. I sell most of my grapes to others. 
and but we farm upwards of about again about uh, about 2,000 acres in Napa Valley, and it's a turnkey operation. So we sell um, to about 92 wineries uh, with the client base from anywhere from all the way up to Harlan, actually. The winery we got started back in 1998. Now I started making wine in, um, when I was 14 with my father in the garage down there in Rutherford. And, uh, and it was mostly just picking with the crews left out there or a second crop or a few things. It just made some home brew, just a couple of barrels every year, maybe a barrel, sometimes nothing because maybe that it was just got to that point where we were too busy to make wine. But it, that's where I learned to make wine. Um, and my dad had uh, his philosophy on wine. It was the, I asked my dad, well, how do you think this wine's gonna turn out? And he goes, uh, well, if it's good, we'll drink it. If it's better than that, we'll share it with friends and family. But if it doesn't turn out, We'll keep the dust down until the next balling arrives. So that was my dad's philosophy. And, and that was uh, true to his point about a lot of things uh, in his life. You know, he made sure that the vineyards that he farmed uh, were sound. Uh, he always, we were um, organically before 1984, when we started certifying our vineyards um, with CCOF and USDA organic and NOP. Those are the certifications that we hold on our vineyards. Um, that we start multiplying from our personal vineyards to a vineyard that we uh, still farm today, Martha's Vineyard and some of the Heights Vineyards as well. They're all certified organic and we work hard. Uh, we have numerous of clients that meet that criteria and they really, again, here's Earth Day. I can actually tell you it's great to farm without herbicides, synthetic made materials, especially nitrogen, which is one of the biggest components of, I think are harmful for the fish, the waterways, uh, the soils, as well as uh, humans. Um, so we, we really concerned about the generation uh, to come. Um, that comes to um, uh, wholeheartedly, we could say that we would like to see that we're not out there destroying the earth with these hard chemicals. Um, the winery, uh, Built that up in Howe Mountain. It was a funny little story. My dad and I always talked about putting a winery in Rutherford and one of the Rutherford properties that we own. I bought my first vineyard in uh, 1980 and I bought a couple other properties until about my real home in 1990. And uh, my dad goes, this is a great place for a vineyard and a winery. I go, oh no, too tired of going home to another vineyard. <laughs> I'd rather just farm during the day and just go home. And uh, so I put horses and cows there for a few years until my dad passed away in 94. And then I thought, well, that didn't go over very well. So I decided to plant a vineyard up there and then built a winery uh, between 1998 and 2001. And that's where we are today. And that's where I live um, with my fiance, Laura, and all our kids, because Laura comes with uh, two girls and I have five kids. So we got the, not quite the Brady Bunch, but we're, Pretty much, seems there. pretty much there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Jessica heads up the winery for me and she can talk about the wines we're having uh, or that you guys have tasted, I think. Yeah, so it looks like we have a few people who are tasting along and a few people who haven't made it out to our stores yet to grab their bottles, but they are um, going to, well, it looks like they'll be taking advantage with their coupon that I will be resending shortly because a couple of people said they didn't get it yet. Um, so we, a few people who are tasting along, I'm sure would love to hear Mark from you and Jessica about the bottles that, you know, we have here in New Hampshire and that they're tasting. Yeah, so, um, hello, I'm Jessica. And so the, our wines are, like my dad said, like they're all organic. So the winery facility has been organic since 2009. Um, there's a big misconception about natural wines and organic wines and all these things. And um, essentially what our, our wines are particularly is that they are made with organic grapes and it says that on the label. So um, if you have the Sauv Blanc or the Zinfandel in front of you, it'll say made with organic grapes. Um, and that's not the only thing that goes into it. There's also um, lower SO2 usage for, for wines. And, um, you know, SO2 is very important for 
for protecting the wine, but there's a lot of wineries that will overdose. And there's an example, um, you know, I opened a white wine uh, at one point and left it uncorked for probably two days. And white wines are very, very aromatic. And, um, you know, I'd smell it, taste it right when I opened it, a day after, smelled the same, exactly the same and tasted the exact same. And I look at the bottle and it said, healthy dose of SO2. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? And so there's, you know, the wine world is very intimidating and to know what, um, you know, goes into the bottle, there's a lot that's not said. Um, and that's kind of one of the things I really appreciate. I'm very biased, obviously, but um, one of the biggest things, like when I talk about like Neil wines, like everything is accurate and hundred percent. So, you know, everything's hundred percent Napa Valley. Um, the varietals are hundred percent, you know, it's hundred percent Cab, it's hundred percent Sauv Blanc. Um, there's no other things in there. And why I say no that, varieties. yeah, why I say that is because there's a lot of things that people don't know about wines. I mean, um, you know, the label could say Cabernet Sauvignon, but there can be so much other stuff in there. It could say Napa Valley, but it can come from Texas or Oregon or Washington. You know, there's a percentage that um, we all are required to meet, but the rest of it is kind of like a free for all. Um, even down to the alcohol, it doesn't, you know, sometimes it's not accurate. So that's one of the things is my dad is like a purist. He, you know, he, to the point where, um, you know, if he's out to go buy a hammer, he's going to go and get the best one out there, you know, that's, but that's the way he rolls. And that's what he does for his wines is that he goes hundred um, percent. And the quality control is incredible. I mean, we have at the winery, um, everything's under our own roof. Um, you know, we have the bottling machine that's right across from the room for, from our tanks and our production facility. And then we have the cave and the barrels. And so um, the winery is meant for, it's small, but it's very efficient. And it's, um, you know, we're, we're like our own little universe up there. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much the wines and the winery and um, yeah, the organic aspect, so. Mark, can you talk a little bit about what the difference is farming organic versus what other wineries out there do? Well, I mean, I, okay, so that's a good question, uh, David. So the, the, what I'm going to say is that, you know, again, um, you know, everybody has the opportunity to do the right thing. And I would have to say that the biggest footstep I, footsteps I've seen in Napa Valley is I'm, I'm seeing a big increase lately. And I think a lot of it has to do with the pandemic and people's, you know, really trying to be as healthy as possible. And I can see the organic market share in all foods growing. So, you know, it's what we can do and, and what we can't do is, a, is there's no gray. It's, it, there's, you know, it's either, if you do not do on an organic vineyard something right, and it's all uh, third party uh, checking, which means that they'll call you up and say, hey, we're gonna come out and visit your vineyards and they're gonna go through your paperwork and they go through your vineyards and, and they look at all the stuff that you've done and they don't give you much notice. Sometimes they just show up. Um, and we have a little over about 800 blocks in Napa Valley that are certified organic and not one has fallen out of the loop since 84. But if we fell out of one, we'd be of a three-year penalty. So we would not be able to certify that venue for three years and we would have to get back into certification thereafter. So again, what we're using is um, non-systemic made materials. That's probably the biggest thing. And what we're saying with that is that a lot of the fertilizers and are systemically made. You know, our fertilizers is not, a lot of it comes from the ocean. A lot of it comes from our compost that we build. So for example, we have to feed our horses, our cows, our sheep, our chickens, certified organic food for we can have a certified animal livestock, which has to be inspected. And then from there, we take the manure to build our compost pile. With biodynamic, the whole property is certified organic so that you use your yard waste and everything that comes from the, so like we have a huge vegetable garden at both in the Rutherford and the Howe Mountain. All that, you know, what we don't use in the kitchen, it all goes in the compost pile. Again, with all the vineyards being certified organic, all the plumbers from the winery is used into the compost pile. 
So we build this and then we spread it back out in the vineyards. So we regenerate is what we're doing. Um, the biggest thing that farmers have to do if you're organic is more that crystal ball. You sort of got to think out there a little bit further because we don't really have the direct IV that you would get with commercial or quote, quote, sustainable farming. You know, some of the materials that we only can get from Mother Earth might be like, for example, oyster shells. It might take 10 years to break down to calcium or potassium from mined materials uh, might take four or five years to get into the into the root system and, and react to what we have to do in the vineyard. So it's not like instantaneously where commercial farmers can actually use a, a commercial fertilizer and see results within a week, you know, like synthetic made nitrogen or synthetic made potassium or phosphate and stuff like that. Um, insects, a little bit more harder to work with. However, we have a lot of great tools. Uh, we have mostly as predator insects, we buy them by the millions. Uh, we place them out in the vineyards and we go after the insects that we want to get rid of. And once those predators have finished their meal, they have nowhere to go but to die. Um, that's the end of their life cycle. Um, we use them for mealybug, we use them for uh, leaf hoppers and for sharpshooters and all kinds of things. We use our goats to uh, mow down around the vineyards when the vineyards are growing to keep the underbrush down like the blackberry that harbors the stuff over the winter time. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of a little bit of work on everything and I, it takes a long time to cover all that stuff. However, that I, you know, it's one of those things that if your heart and soul is about, again, passing a farm on for generations and you're not using weed killer and you're not using um, synthetic made nitrogen and stuff like that that's killing the organisms in the ground, in the soils, uh, you can actually truly say that this soil is gonna be healthy. I feel really good. I went out in the vineyard today and went like this and just picked up the earth in my hand. And I could just smell it. I don't have to worry about what's been in it, you know? And where um, farmlands that are not into the certification program, I'd be, I would not ever do that, to be honest with you. Looks like there's a couple questions. Um, so first one, let's see, what type of barrels um, or stainless steel tanks and for how long? So uh, at the winery, so for the Sauv Blanc, I'll start with, um, uh, the Sauv Blanc does, uh, is grown in Rutherford, um, the property where I live now, where my dad was raised. Um, and that is the only one that goes into stainless steel tanks and, um, so white wine is very much more simple to make compared to red wine, but um, you know, so we'll, it's all in stainless steel, but actually we actually take 13%, you know, it changes um, of the whole lot and put it into new French oak barrels. And um, we'll let it wildly ferment in there. And the reason being is that it adds a certain nuance to the wine. Sauv Blanc can be, um, you know, white wine can be sometimes lacking depth, especially because we don't add other varieties to our wines. Uh, it's it, it really shows in the winemaking. So for us, the the depth from you know barrel usage for Sauv Blanc gives it um, more of like a yeastiness uh, and uh, just like like I said, like just more body essentially. And then along with the nice beautiful fruit from Sauv Blanc that it portrays a lot of the lemon and the um, meringue and the uh, citrus. So that one's that. And then for uh, barrels, we have, it's all new French oak. Um, the Napa Valley Cabernet is the, of the whole lot, 50% of it is in new French oak and then 50% of it is in used. And the question I get all the time when I do tastings is how, how many times can you use a barrel? Well, for Napa Valley barrels, I would think is one of the biggest expenses for each winery. Um, one French oak barrel is a thousand to fifteen hundred a piece, depending on which part of France you get it, and it gets very specific. Um, and so for us, a used barrel is about two, three, four times, depending on the year. And then, um, you know, sometimes if it's a lighter year, like 2014, 2016, like cooler years, we'll do, you know, less oak. Um, and then for the big, big years, like 2017, we'll, you know, throw more oak at it because the fruit can handle it. So. Um, and then once you get into our single vineyards, the 20, like, you know, the Howe Mountain and the Rutherford Dust um, cabs, those are 100% new French oak for two years. 
So, and that's because there's, it's concentrated from one spot. It's, um, it can handle the oak and the structure and it actually needs it. Otherwise, you know, it's too fruity. So um, yeah, that's that. Hopefully that answers everything. Um, any okay. vegan varieties? Well, we're pretty much vegan all the way through um, because we don't use any egg whites or um, finding materials that um, can be problematic. Um, the other question would be is how can you tell what what the true percentage of grapes, where the grapes were from, it's not clear on the label. Well, that is a problem. Uh, that's one of the things I, I've been fighting since, uh, uh, not fighting, but trying to work with the government with in 1994, when I knew I was gonna get in the wine business and start you know, making wine in 98 commercially. And that's why we put 100% Napa Valley on the back of our label and 100% Cabernet on the back of our label, for example. Um, if you look at a, a label, um, Cabernet Sauvignon only has to be 75% by law anywhere. And after that, the other 25% could be any other varietal that winemaker may choose to blend. And, you know, that's not uncommon. I mean, people will blend Merlot or Malbec or Cap Franc or Bordeaux varieties into it and, and make a great wine, no doubt about that. But I'm for like a, a purist, like Jessica says, I wouldn't be or certified organic and do the things that I do. And I feel that if we grow it correctly in the right soils, um, we're just tending to, we're just tending to it at the winery. Um, not every year I do make wine though. I mean, not that I didn't make wine in 2020 because of the smoke taint, but I also didn't make wine in 2000 because that vintage just quite wasn't there. And it's like anything else, you know, I look at it like a chef, you know, you go out to the market, you pick the best vegetables and you go to the protein shelf and you look at the, I want that steak and this steak and that steak or that chicken breast or that, that cut of fish. You, you selectly pick what you could take home to make the best dish possible. I, I'm the same way. I mean, honestly, we're out there and we look at the vineyards and we say, we're gonna take this section and we're gonna take that section or we're not going to take this section. We're not going to take that section. And so my um, my case production has been up and down based on more of what Mother Nature gives us out in the vineyard and what we're doing with the farming because the soil doesn't change. And one thing you have with continuity with our our philosophy and what we've been doing is that we're the same farmer on the same pieces of property. Everything is estate grown. Everything we grow all our grapes ourselves and. Um, and we make wines from those vineyards. And what we don't, we sell to other people. In most cases, we sell about 80% to other wineries from our estate vineyards. So that's uh, one of the things. So the other things that change on the label, also um, Napa Valley has to be uh, 85%. It says Napa County only has to be 80%. So in the back of my label, it says 100% Napa Valley, 100% Cabernet again. Um, the year also could change a little bit. There's a little bit of flexibility on vintages. We're hundred percent what says on the year. There's about a 5% movement also on that. So again, it goes back to be a peers. The integrity is a strong point in our family and, and a lot of families in Napa Valley as well. That we're not the only ones here that's doing that, but I can't speak for all wineries in a sense, or all the wineries in the world. I just know that there's a lot of integrity in a lot of growers here in Napa Valley. There's a lot of growers that did not make wine in 2020 or, or the grapes that they picked before the fire, um, you know, before the smoke camp got in, you know, and they dropped the rest of the crop. I could tell you that. But um, so there's still some sound here and um, people are looking the best interests of the integrity of the winery and integrity of, of selling the wines to consumers. Mark, can I ask you a question from Facebook? Sure. Somebody watching on Facebook would like to know if you've really been making wine for 55 years. I haven't been making wine for 55 years. I started when I was 14, so I'm not that quite that old yet. I, mean, I can still do math, so I still got that up here. But uh, I've been in the vineyards farming for 55 years. This would be my 55th harvest. That's correct. Uh, for those of you watching on Facebook, that was the title for tonight's event. Um, and when I first read it, I was like, no, Mark Neal is not old enough to have been making wine for 55 years. But 
There we go, guys. We heard it from the horse's mouth. He's been on the farm 55 years. That's right. But I started making wine when I was 14, but I started drinking wine before that. And that's what usually what happens here in Napa Valley with your kids. Prime example. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I knew what I was tasting or that I liked it, but you know. So. Cool. Uh, Mark, what are some of your largest or biggest obstacles in the vineyard? from mother managing nature. mother nature you know i mean it's really you know it's really funny david thank you for another great question is you know we've had um uh pest problems that come from overseas you know um the uh european moth for an example that was here about 15 20 years ago um we've had you know we got a lot of uh, issues like that but i wouldn't say the single one is mother nature because for an example Again, we're in our second year of drought. We've received like 10, 12 inches of rain total for the year. Um, and that's from November through April. And the bigger problem this year, it was spread out all those months versus like getting it all at once, like it did back in the 14, 15, uh, 16, the, that, uh, those vintages there. Um, Mother Nature is one of those things you gotta be very uh, cautious with. You know, there's only certain things we can do and and plan for i mean i'm always looking at the weather all the time and always looking out a couple of weeks you know it it regulates our sulfurine or fungicide control it regulates uh our you know if we have to irrigate especially on drought years but this is our second year of drought you know last year we got about 15 inches of rain this year we're around that 10 to 12. i mean our average is like 35 36 inches of rain so it's very difficult now is this my first two years of drought in a row? No. I mean, we had the 76, 77. It was actually, if I remember right, is about the same problem, about the same amount of rainfall. And uh, back then, you know, um, there was a lot less new vineyards going in. I mean, or new, new vineyards going in with irrigation, I should say. Um, still, there was a lot of head pruned vines, unirrigated vineyards back then. Um, so those mother nature is the thing, you know, I mean, uh, prime example, 2011, it rained a couple inches during pollination and we lost half the crop on the ground. Um, again, you know, fire of 2020 and 2017 and smoke tain and in a sense of uh, if, you know, the difference between 2020 and 17 is, is, is huge because 17, majority of Napa Valley was already harvested. We were completely in barrel, you know, some of us ourselves was in barrel. We already had everything harvested. It was an early season and the fire was so late in the year that I, that was probably like maybe five or 10% of Napa Valley was not picked. Um, 2020, however, was a little more difficult. You know, um, you know, the first fire was August 17th. Um, the lightning fire and the glass fire came thereafter. So that was a difficult situation. But pollination, you know, that typical, that end of May, first part of June, um, then it's, you know, if we heat or cool, and then you got to look at harvest time, you know, are we going to have a nice harvest all the way through with great weather, or are we going to get the five inches of rain that we got in 2010 in, in October? And when you're not, and it's difficult to, you um, get ripening up in the hills because the hills are a little more difficult than the valley floor when it comes to ripening due to the fact that it's a lot cooler up there. It takes, it's like a slow, um, slow cooker versus, you know, in a sense that it's a longer season up there. We're out of the fog, but it's a lot cooler. So we'd like the idea that we're out of the fog because we're going to have a long season, no matter what. And, and typically, you know, um, we're running about uh, about two to three weeks later than would be on the valley floor at that time. Looks like some there's more questions. So what is the new label? I think people are probably referring to this bottle that you were picking up. So oh, no, no, that's not the, this is actually an old label. So that was my is, first label. Yeah, so very 90s retro, you know. Um, I think, like, what were you saying? You didn't really actually have a label when you made this wine, and so you just kind of made something up, right? Yeah, it was like, my first vintage was only like 360 cases commercially. So it was uh, some of that was just like, what can I get fast and get on uh, get on the bottle and get it going kind of thing. Um, Are you going to bring it back? I think it's kind of cool, to be honest. <laughs> like, I think we should do like a little special edition, but- Absolutely. I, we we it, might, so. we might. You never know. You know, Jessica's always, you know, prodded me on a few things, but- uh, this label came up on our um, 
was actually going to be debuted on the 2000 vintage, but we didn't make a 2000 vintage, so this did not come out. But so the first vintage that the brick color uh, label came out was 2001. Um, this represents the color of our soils in in How Mountain on 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 the west bank of How Mountain. The east bank of How Mountain is more the white tufa. On the red, on the west side, typically you'll see more of the Aiken color series. This is more what you'll see, uh, you know, it's just reddish, uh, like you see, like it's sometimes in, uh, like in Maui, for example. Um, so this is this color, why I choose it was from the soils in the vineyard at the winery above the winery. Um, so this is our current label. Uh, we also have um, a debut of the one and only that came out uh, this year. It was a little project that I was doing way in the back of the cave where I'm making the wine kind of thing and uh, trying to get some, um, just fooling around with a, more of a Bordeaux blend and on a couple projects, you know, and, and then all of a sudden I've got to better do something with this. So I balled it up and, um, and it was only like about, uh, what, three or four barrels, something like that for a couple of vintages and then I stopped. So yes, there's some one and only. Um, You'll see that out in the, on, on the place, but it's again, it's like each year was only around what 50 cases or 75 cases for each year. So yeah. it's not big. So one and only someone's asking. Um, so if you're on our website, you'll probably see it there. Um, it's a new project essentially for my dad. So our wines are never going to really change. Like, you know, we're always going to do 100% cab, um, 100% petite Syrah and from our estate vineyards which is another question. So estate essentially means that we own them. Um, we don't outsource any fruit. Um, and so that's why we're able to call it estate. So, um, and that's not gonna ever change for the Neil label. So the one and only essentially um, is kind of a project for you just to go out and, you know, like this year you might be making some Pinot Noir. Like, so yeah. you get to go to places and you can be like, Hey, like, that's a really cool vineyard. Like I like, you know, mostly make some wine from it. yeah. the one and only is most of the vineyards I've uh, been active on where I've developed the vineyard. Um, and I always thought it was absolutely best site, but I'm not a farmer for it. Um, so I've been looking at those sites, you know, and yeah, it's just like Jessica is sort of like a project for me. Well, you could tell who, how she's pushing me out of Neil already and pushed me on to another uh, project, but, uh, which is, pretty, it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that, uh, you know, again, you know, I got, uh, two boys working for a farming company. Jessica's taking over the reins at the winery and helping me out. And I, and I appreciate all the help, but, uh, uh, the one and only, yes, I'm going to be making a little Pinot Noir this year. Uh, that'll be a hundred percent by Verado for sure. But, um, yeah, it's, again, it's, we're making all, everything's gonna be small production. You know, the wineries, you know, are single vineyards, you know, they're running around, you know, four or five, 600 cases, you know, every year. We upped that once Jessica got back, you know, it was typically around 150 cases. We weren't doing much more than that. Um, again, what's your, uh, what's, what is your favorite wine you make? I haven't made it yet, so sorry about that. One of these days, I'll let you know when I make it. Uh, do you bring pollinators into your vineyards? No. Uh, um, grapes are self-pollinating. Um, what we don't want is depollinators, which is typically bad weather. Um, so uh, we're, we're thankful that the, the grapes are self-pollinating. How can we get more petite Syrah into New Hampshire? Oh, uh, good a, question. A really great question. It sounds <laughs> Chad, like we need you to bring in some more. Yeah. Well, here's the deal on the, on the petite Syrah. So there, there is no petite Syrah in 2015, all the way through what uh, to 2020, we were going to make petite Syrah. And so with the smoke, we did not make anything in 2020, no grapes at all, no wine, uh, everything got dropped to the ground and was composted into the vineyards. Um, uh, 21, we're hoping to cross our fingers that we will have a successful year. We'll be making a petit straw again. So we, we had to do, we're doing some revamping in our Rutherford vineyards. And it, it, it's, it's basically, there's a lot of changes down there that we're making. And just could probably tell you about some of the exciting whites we're planting. We're going back old school on a few things and maybe it could tribute to my mom who, who is really the, uh, first generation, um, from Greece here in, in, um, uh, her, her mother, my grandmother came over from Greece and then my mom was born here, but uh, we're gonna be, we have a Greek white going in and a Greek red varieties that we, uh, that I found 
absolutely in love with. And in, in, uh, in, uh, one came from Santorini and the other one came from the mainland, of course. But um, uh, we're going to contribute those. But we're doing some other old white varieties in uh, Rutherford as well. We're um, going back what was planted back in the 60s and 70s that are not no longer really in production here in Napa Valley. Um, so we're going to come up with a heritage white. Um, so yeah, we're, gonna, we're making some changes. So the Petit Syrah got into that realm where we're changing things up um, and uh, we wanted to get a little bit of age going on. And uh, so we'll have a Petit Syrah coming back out. That's for sure. I do have four cases in New Hampshire. So Chad, if we've got customers who are interested, we can ship some. You should get mad at me that I don't have any Petit Syrah. I'm the one who should be mad because I can sell it to you. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Very true. Oh my God. Over your left shoulder are those some model cars that you collect. I see a white Corvette. Well, yeah, the white Corvette. Well, I don't see a white Corvette. Where is the white Corvette? Um, somebody's got really good eyes. I don't know if they, but anyway, no, what, um, so give you a little history. Uh, um, I started buying equipment when I was nine. And by the time I got out of high school, I had five of my good buddies from high school. We were um, taking out all uh, uh, prune trees and walnut trees, and we were building vineyards um, after school during the summer. And then um, I went to college and I said, I told my dad, I go, this is not quite working out for me because I could be making X and then going to school. My dad goes, well, you're the one who decided to go to school. So I started building a company. It was a development company, which I would end up working all over California while farming, helping my dad farm Napa Valley. And we weren't at the scale that we are now in Napa Valley in, in all means of farm management here. But uh, I was one of the biggest land developers for agriculture in California, uh, working for Gallo, as well as uh, numerous of wineries. I put in a lot of vineyards in Napa Valley, pretty much been on everybody's soil one way or another since I was you know, a kid, you know, going with my dad, you know, when I was six, seven years old here. Um, yeah, I bought, you know, big D10s, big, I had D9s, D8s, these huge bulldozers, um, some weighing of, on a trailer, they would weigh about uh, 70 ton, um, uh, built reservoirs all over California um, and terraces and built a lot of vineyards. So, I do have a heavy equipment still today, uh, not to that scale. Um, I sort of gave that up a little bit to raise five kids. Uh, Jessica was 12 at the time and my youngest was eight months. And um, so I, I got the on call uh, to be a single parent to take care of that situation and uh, got rid of my big equipment and got down to my toys again. That's what, <laughs> that's what happened. So there you go. That's, but no, I do my actually right now, Zachary, my oldest son, he's up on a bulldozer right now, ripping up on a hillside for replanting. And um, Alexios, who's just turned 19, he's on a backhoe, putting irrigation lines on another project. And I got a son that's in his tutor class right now. He's 15. And I don't think he's paying attention because he wants to get on the D6 and go up and clean up some rocks up on another hillside vineyard. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to see, uh, all the kids being involved. No doubt about it. Chad could use some work at his house. If you're interested, I think he's putting in a patio or chicken coops or something and needs a, needs a tractor. <laughs> yeah. We just got 20 yards of dirt and a duck coops going in tomorrow. Nice. Well, we used to have land movers that would haul 40, 40 yards of dirt and we would take some hills down, um, 50, 60 feet, and we would lower the hills down and re-slope everything, and the vineyards are just beautiful. Uh, we did a lot of land like that. It's gorgeous. Great looking vineyards. Would you ever do, oh, sorry. Would you ever do a late harvest petite sera? This is actually something I want to do, but. I guess we might be doing that. I so, don't know. Maybe in the future. That's very no, exciting. we're, we're, uh, we're looking at different things. You know, I mean, I found a, um, you might know this, uh, Chad, a uh, kava. It's a Greek, uh, it's five-year barrel age. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? Have you heard it? It's great. So we're thinking about doing that grappa um, barrel age. I'm, I'm really con uh, looking at that. I'm also looking at doing uh, grapeseed oil due to the fact that since we're certified organic, organics, you know, I'm, see, I don't wanna be wasteful. I'm, a, I'm that kind of person that makes sure everything I do, I go from one end, I mean, truly, 
from the farm to table on everything. I'm, I'm looking at uh, some st uh, opportunities to get into a certified organic uh, bison and, and cow operation as well. Um, that's just the way I am. I mean, I'm, we do everything in house here. We have more control. We don't have a lot of subcontractors. You know, we do our own mapping. We do, we do our own plumbing. We do our own electricity. We do all the stuff we do in our farming company. It doesn't mean that we're just farming. We pretty much uh, build buildings as well. In fact, my winery was built by a team of five guys that work for me uh, that built my winery. And uh, all the stainless work and the copper work inside my winery, if you've been there or not, uh, you're all more than welcome and, and come on out and visit Jessica and myself. But everything was done within my own welding or my own shop. Um, this is what we do. So Mark, can I ask you a question? Sure. So you were talking about your new label and how, well, newer, newish label and how the color is the color of the soil of your Howe Mountain estate. And the Howe Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon is one of tonight's featured wines, which our attendees can use their coupon on. So I was wondering if you and Jessica could talk a little bit about that wine. Sure can. Um... Our 2016 Howe Mountain, uh, of course, it's, it's grown at the winery. Uh, again, this property is certified organic um, and it's absolutely um, um, very small production. I think it was uh, what, 600 cases or something like yeah. that total. It was the first move up from the original 150 that I was doing every year until Jessica decided to come back and work for, for me. Or, but actually now I'm working for her, as you can notice, um, and she tried to you know, take me out with COVID uh, over Christmas, but that uh, didn't work too well, but because uh, I'm here, I'm back. But um, anyway, um, the Howe Mountain is uh, a project, you know, I built it there, the winery's there. Uh, we got eight blocks, a different sun aspect. Um, we're, we, we live in like a, uh, its own little horseshoe bowl. And so we got different aspects of the morning sun and afternoon sun. And this is absolutely the one of the best blocks that always outperform. Um, and we used to sell a lot of the block to others, but we just grabbed a few grapes for ourselves to make the 150 cases. So the 2016 is awesome. Uh, again, you know, all new French oak. Uh, it was all barrel selected to gain that reputation to make in 2016. And the rest of it went into our Napa Valley uh, in 2016. Um, one thing that we also have the that you have the Rutherford Dust um, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, here again, like Petit Syrah, we made a two, 13 and a 14 Rutherford Dust. However, we did not make a 15 and 16 Rutherford Dust because it didn't quite make the barrel um, tasting that we like to see to make a single vineyard. But there's a 2017 Rutherford Dust that that'll be out there. Um, I'm not too sure if you all have that, but. That is another single vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon for sure. But the Howe Mountain is drinking well. I love it. Again, this is the, our current release. It's um, typical, the five-year ball aging that we like to do, uh, or barrel to ball aging that we like to do and hold it back. Um, that's, that's our norm. Awesome. Well, we do have a few more questions, but you know, we, we have a little bit of an exciting giveaway tonight. So before we get into those last couple of questions, um, you know, Jessica, Mark, I thought now might be a good time to have the, to do the trivia for the giveaway, which everybody, it's a really exciting giveaway tonight. I am very sad that I am not eligible to win because you're in for a real treat. It's a, it's a, it's an awesome prize package. And so the, you know, as you know, the world is starting to open up again. We're able to travel a little bit. Things are just going to get better. It's been it's been a year. So if you are planning a trip out to California, Mark and Jessica are giving away an epic prize package that includes lunch for four at the winery, a winery tour and tasting, a Neil family corkscrew, and I think there may have been some rumblings about a bike ride with Mark and Jessica. There you go. So the Neils are going to ask some trivia. So if you would like to be considered for this prize, please answer. I, I, I might even throw it. You know what? I'll throw in a, a 2006 Magnum 
which is absolutely drinking really great. If somebody could beat me up, how Mountain Road? I'll take you up on All that. Right. <laughs> Any cyclist on the line up for a challenge? <laughs> Tracy says she's on, you're on. All right, there you go. Do I have to use a bike? <laughs> well, yeah, you I, might honestly I, I you motorbike, uh, bicycle, tri tricycle, unicycle. If you run, you might actually beat him up the hill. <laughs> oh yeah. <Ooh. laughs> oh, I might be I might be in the I'm running like then. <laughs> Um, all right, so the Twitter question. Are we uh, are we gonna ask the question? Yes, you you guys ask. I'll okay. watch for correct answers. All right, do I want to ask? Sure. Okay. Sure. So the question is, what year did my dad's growing company go organic, certified organic? Oh, no correct answers yet. Guess okay. again. Oh, I see one, Susan. 1984. Awesome. Susan, great job. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Awesome. Well, yeah, we got, we got a couple of them now. Yeah, there's a lot. All Looks right. like we're going to have to split uh, lunch between 10 Who's the first one? Now we got like everybody's answering. Yeah. <laughs> Susan, Susan was. Yep. Susan, you were first. Awesome. The correct, with the correct answer of 1984. Let me know if you ride a bike or not, Susan, because if that's the case, I might have to learn. <laughs> I might have to get off that tricycle I got. Do I take the training wheels off now? Or what? Nice. All right. So before we let you guys go for the night, we do have a few more questions. Uh, another one from Facebook for Jessica. Jessica, how long have you been involved at the winery? I'm guessing your whole life, but <laughs> yeah, that's a big question. Um, yeah, no, I mean since I was a little girl, but um, okay. like a officially uh, two years ago I came back from college um, but I was working at a wine shop prior and uh, that's where I learned a lot about like tasting wines from a lot of, all over the world and you know comparison and or comparing like Napa Valley um, you know our wines in Napa Valley and uh, yeah so two years do pretty much you know there's only three of us that work at the winery and so I, I essentially um, do a lot of the front of the house, but also sending out orders and marketing and, um, you know, direct to consumer, just customer service. So, yeah. Great. And then this next one is good. I think it's going to be a Chad David combo. So Chad and David, uh, the people of the internet want to know at which stores. Oh, uh, adorable. Uh, me and my siblings. And there was Aww. one that's not pictured yet. And, you know, he was not born there yet. But, wow. So. See? Yeah. So you like, you know, after school, just, you know, forget homework. We were, we were stomping grapes and we all, were helping the harvest. All working so. at the harvest time. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Uh, so Chad and David, the, our viewers here on Zoom and on Facebook want to know if the four wines featured tonight are readily available at our stores or are they only available at select locations? Chad? So the four wines tonight, um, two of them are going to be at select locations. I believe the Howell Mountain is uh, very limited. Um, and then the other two should be readily available at all of our store locations. And if they aren't available, you can request them and we can easily bring them in for you by request. The Cab and the Sauvignon Blanc are well distributed. Uh, the Howell Mountain, you have, what is it, 32 cases coming in? Um, they should be coming in soon. Um, very soon. Yes. If, but like David said, the uh, the cab and the Savion Blanc are widely available. They should be available at, available at all of our retail locations. Excellent. Yeah, so awesome. Just, just to remind everybody, um, the Savion Blanc we didn't make any wine in 2020. So what you have is we got the end it. of it. So but I do appreciate all the work that Chad does for me and and David and everybody and and especially all of you in the audience uh you know spend the evening with us and uh listen to a little bit of our story it's a all right mark. story mark mark one last question before we let you go so for those of you who weren't on at the beginning we did have a little bit of technical difficulties so we passed the time chatting about mark's upcoming wedding and my upcoming wedding and so one of our viewers did hear about that and she wants to know which of your wines you'll be serving at your wedding I'm going to be serving the 2002 How Mountain. All right, guys, you heard it. 
Now come to our select location, select New Hampshire liquor and wine outlets and try it for yourself. Celebrate Mark Neal's wedding next month. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Congratulations to Susan for winning the epic trip out, well, the, the adventures out in California. Uh, I will be emailing you first thing in the morning to get your details over to David. Thank you to Chad for being here tonight and having product availability ready. And of course, Mark and Jessica, thank you so much thank for taking much. some time out of your day. It was so great talking to you guys. Uh, if you have all been loving these talks that we've been having in honor of Earth Day, we do have uh, Frog Sleep coming on next week to close out the month with us with one more winery. Uh, we also have Thomas More Bourbon next week. So for those of you who enjoy spirits and wine next week, we've got a little bit of both. So check our website, explore.liquorandwineoutlets.com to see all the information about those two events and I'll give you a little spoiler, Chad and I have another very special event coming up on May 20th. So be prepared. It's going to be epic. There you go. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Good All night. Right. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.